Shalom. We are getting into teaching on uh, defining, defining God, uh, the God of the Bible, the Hebrew Scriptures, and so that we better understand, building on a Messianic Torah-keeping perspective, um, how, how Yeshua portrayed the Heavenly Father, uh, our God, and just starting from the beginning. The picture of views here you'll see is that of the burning bush and it was really at the burning bush that we get um, a wonderful description of our Heavenly Father um, and what sets him apart and makes him unique and that which we should always express when it comes to him and understand this expression in his name. Now for um, for creation, I mean, it's tough for us to understand the great I am and the, the one who's completely above everything else. And, um, and so we use, we use words that we understand, like he's powerful and, and he knows everything and he's, he is great and mighty and uh, the, one, the one that we call upon. And so different... Uh, different cultures and different languages have different words for God or what, or what we try and understand as uh, the Almighty, uh, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But um, I think sometimes we, we don't quite understand how He tried to reveal what is the essence that we need to try and comprehend about Him being above all that we can really describe. <clears throat> Uh, examples. <clears throat> so, yeah, the, this this key thing was spoken of by um, the Greeks. I have a picture here of someone called Aristotle. Uh, maybe you've heard of him. And I think he got from Plato belief in God or just the transcendent one. And, and, and through Greek philosophy, they'd been wrestling with the idea of of cause and effect and uh, you know for nearly everything we see well I'd say everything it's like we always ask as as man like well why is this here and why is it this way and the why is, is basically saying where, where does this come from what caused it to be this way and then whatever caused this thing to be this way we could also ask of that and what caused that to be that way and then we move backwards in time and we move along and 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 so you always know when um, someone is talking about God and they're not thinking of God in terms of how Hebrews thought of God because they'll often say well who created God and the the key element of the God of the Bible, the Greek philosophers actually got to, <clears throat> and in that Aristotle, he, he referred to whatever was going to be God as the unmoved mover. That for everything else, we are, we are because of something before us that moved us or, or created us. Uh, whatever is Elohim, whatever is God, whatever is, is above, you know, the the greatest is above all of creation and is the source from which everything comes from and it itself will not have come from anything before it will just be so this is important to understand and this is where you realize you know the the inspiration of scriptures and the one that spoke to Moses at the bush um, just highlighted this so perfectly in that uh, his name the god of the god of israel he didn't he didn't make his name uh by the other things we might if we were going to create gods we most probably would have gone for the powerful one or or you know as i said the all knowledgeable one the all knowing and this and that he sets himself apart and he says well the problem is, all, you know, all of creation has knowledge, all of creation has power in these things. What's that one element that I possess that nothing else does and that makes my name, my character different? And so this is what he does when he describes himself in the bush as I am. When Moses says, who shall I say has sent me to, to uh, Israel and Egypt? And he said, tell them Hayah. 
I am is sending you. And we see in this whole passage of the burning bush that he actually, he uses different forms of this a Hebrew root of to be or, or being. Another place, instead of haya, he says, e ye, ashe e ye, I will be that which I will be. Okay, that's, that's interesting. And then we also, within that passage, he gives his name, or what we understand as proper name, um, that we call him by, uh, the Masoretics, the, the, they wrote it, uh, with these vowels as Yehovah, uh, <clears throat> certainly we get a, a sense of, of how the name uh, was possibly pronounced in, in the first century. Um, but even within his name, Jewish people have looked at it and said, well, Yehovah, what, what does it mean uh, when he gives his name there? And it seems to be, it seems to be a culmination of different forms of the I am and different tenses coming together in that name as Jehovah or some people say uh, Yahweh um, or is expressed here as Yehovah. So I want to read uh, something I found from a Jewish rabbi uh, that I think is quite insightful. Uh, he says, God is the source of all existence. <clears throat> Haya means was, Hove means is, Yehiye means will be. Combining the words for past, present, and future gives us a four letter name of God, by which he is known in the Torah. It is not, however, simply an allusion to the fact that God was long ago, is still today, and will be unto eternity. In his famous theory of relativity, Einstein taught us that time itself is not absolute. It is merely another dimension, analogous to height, width, and depth. God is yud heh vav -He, Yehovah, because all three tenses are subsumed by him. He is the creator of time and unaffected by time. He doesn't know what will happen before things happen. A... Uh, a description that would present us with the problem of predestination and elimination of man's free will. Because he is above the limitation implicit in the word before, as well as the word after. He is, Yehovah, occupying all of time simultaneously, even as he occupies all of space, the entire universe is filled with his glory. So this is really interesting about... Uh, him revealing himself in his name, Yehovah, Eyeh, Eyeh, I will be that which I will be, or Haya, I am. And it's also exciting with Revelation chapter 4, where we see the description of actually what the rabbis are talking of here, but you don't actually get in anywhere, but you get in Revelation 4, the description of the one who was, and is, and is to come. So that's quite exciting. And, uh, and so we, just so we understand, this is about the transcendency that he is above um, all we can think and imagine, in a sense. All right, the next thing is to understand that in ancient Israel, Israel would understand as, they would understand God as Avinu, as our Father. Um, it's for a few, there's a few reasons why, but it, it comes through the scriptures and it's the most, um, what can I say, close revelation, um, or let's say one of um, a relationship, you know, father, son. So with coming out of Egypt, you, you know, say to Pharaoh, Israel's my firstborn son. Like, so you, you get that sense of father. Uh, Moses warns um, Israel, I think it's Deuteronomy 8, where he says, or maybe 4, anyway, he says, you know, uh, that God, uh, God disciplines his sons, you know, as, as a father disciplines his children, so he will discipline you, Israel. Um, we have in Malachi, when Israel was bringing bad offerings to God, and then it was just like, you know, he speaks and he says, is this, is this what a son would bring to to his father, where's the respect due to me? And so, and so, in the scriptures, the general, to generalize, we speak of God as 
the Father, as our Father, and with that personal relationship there. Um, and so we see this with different, I think you call them theophoric names, but names that are built with the name of God in them. Um, so we see like a name like Yehoram, um, Yehovah of the Heights. Another way of saying that could be Avira, uh, our father of the heights. Uh, also Yehoshua with uh, uh, Joshua's name in Hebrew, Yehoshua. Another way is Avishua, our father saves. And so we see this. But we, we get it even more with um, just names like Aviyah, our father is Yah, or Aviel, our father is God. This was the typical way of referred to God as Father. And we would use masculine, the masculine tense of he, his, um, and that's, that's how the scripture is presented. And so uh, we should maintain that. That's the typical understanding. Not like Yehovah is, well, there's the one person, the Father, and there is the, the Son, and there is the Holy Spirit, and Yehovah is, generally speaking, Generally speaking, uh, God is our Father. That's how it was in Israel. And it might also, yes, there's a relationship side. It also might relate to the I am idea in that um, Father was another way of saying like the progenitor, that, you know, coming from, like, like we might say with Satan, like he's the father of all lies, or the father of deceiving. You know, it's like all deception comes from him. So also with the I am, all existence comes from the I am. He's our father, the father of life, the author of creation. These kind of words um, are used so we would understand um, his greatness and uh, him being above us. So sometimes you can see scriptures where some would, some would say, no, you need to emphasize the deity of Yeshua here and, uh, and, and go, go with and, and, and use it because it's calling Yeshua God. And actually you can read them again and realize it's not how people naturally spoke. Or in general, they would speak of Yeshua as the of God, like the word of God or the image of God or the son of God. Um, but that, yeah... Um, the glory of God. Here's an example in Titus. Now, many people would, would love the New King James um, translation where, where it's like equating Yeshua like directly with God. Um, but that just wasn't naturally how Israel would talk. Uh, the, the reading there is looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Um, yeah, it, it, it kind of works, and some people may want it for different reasons, but that wasn't typical. And you can see that when you get to an interlinear, and you actually read how it reads in Titus 2.13, uh, there it's more like awaiting the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of the great God and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Now, I'm not getting away from, he says, before Abraham was, I am, and, and the Word became flesh. Um, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Fine, but it's important for us to understand that when we're talking about God, <laughs> really, we're talking about that which is transcendence. And when we're talking about uh, the appearance and uh, to see, um, this, this is of the created realm. And so usually we would be thinking more of, we behold something that is of Him or Him... Um, coming down to our level, if we could put it that way. Um, and so, we'll go through this uh, some more. So, he is the I Am, he's above his creation, and he creates out of himself only, and there is only one I Am. Now, an interesting thing, if you, if to understand this idea of transcendency and above us, and just, he's in a dimension that just is him, and he is and always will be, and he is the great I Am, a great way to understand this being above us is a book uh, that I read a couple of years ago called Flatland by Edwin Abbott. And uh, I'd recommend it. It's quite a cheap book. Uh, but it, and it, yeah, it can become quite heavy after a while, but it's really interesting. It will really make you think. And basically what it does is it tries to make our world a transcendent 
world so that we can sit on top of another world and this world is called flatland and it only has two dimensions if you think of a, a piece of paper and and you, it gets into this world of flatland and you learn how how there are these different geological shapes that exist in there and and anyway i think it's the life of a square and the square tells us his story and it, it explains the rules of flatland and how everything works and he goes through his, and then there's some trials that he goes through and uh, and you actually begin to care for this uh yeah, made up land on just uh, it's got uh, length and breadth <clears throat> and then and then it gets really interesting because then it talks about Mr. Square talks about the day when the visitor came from above and and he talks about I heard this voice but I couldn't see where it came from and then this voice told me he knew me and uh, uh, he could even see my inner person that he could see inside of me and and Mr. Square tells him, listen, this is impossible. Like, what are you talking about? And then the voice says, well, it's because I'm from above. And, and he's like, what is above? Like, is it, I, we understand forward, back, and sideways, but what's above? And, and so as you read this book, it's really interesting. And it gets, it gets um, I think, I think it's, it just grows and grows. And, and, and we can begin to understand the challenge of describing the God of the Bible, let's at least put it that way, and some of the challenges we have. Um, but needless to say, I think Mr. Square becomes a, uh, he becomes an advocate and he preaches, he preaches about the realm of the above and everyone considers him crazy and then they throw him in a lunatic asylum or something like that. Um, anyway, and uh, so, but an interesting, an interesting story for us to understand this idea of being above and looking down. And that is the idea of the Father, one outside creation. He is outside of creation. He is not, we don't have pantheism. It's a mystery how he can reveal himself in creation, but to begin with, we must understand that he is outside. That's important. Um, so, yeah, read Flatland and and you get the sense of what it must be like to be the I am. Okay, <clears throat> so in terms of Yeshua coming and Messiah, he, he really continued the, the general understanding that Israel had of the I am as being our Father. Uh, and he taught our Father who art in heaven and this idea of the transcendent. And he would say, St. God is spirit. You know, spirit is again we're using creation terms to try and understand them, but it's, so it's like our breath. It's uh, we can't see it yet. We believe in it, right? And same with Heavenly Father. There's unseen realms amongst us, and He dwells in what is unseen, and yet is very real, and is our life as His breath to us, and we are to understand. Um, but this this issue of the one who is not seen and is above the created order. This comes through as important. Um, and we'll look at a couple of scriptures that show this. Another, yeah, another place is where Yeshua is talking about his father and uh, the disciples and John, they're like, well, show us the father, you know? Uh, we, wanna, we wanna see the father. And then it's just like, you know, you've seen me, you've seen the father. Basically like, you live on flat land, guys. There is no way you're gonna get the I am the that which dwells in multiple dimensions and is beyond even that and just is you're going to get him within your view of sight and you're going to be able to go oh there he is i've seen the father open your minds we're talking about we're not making up gods god this god is massive this god is huge beyond what you can understand uh, and yet he has revealed himself um so this, this issue of uh, God as spirit and, and, and show us the Father, he also speaks about this issue of seeing God and that uh, he says quite specifically, you know, general understanding of Elohim. People may not like this because of how we accentuate, well, with Christian dogma, uh, the Yeshua and, 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 and seeing God in this, but... but in general, just understanding God, Elohim, 
uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 18, Yeshua says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Okay, so that's, that's interesting. Um, and it's mainly this idea of, of seeing Him. It, we have heard Him because... Again, audio, you know, audio is again, it's spirit, it's unseen. It seems as though our Father can from above speak to us. But this idea of looking upon um, that, no, that's, that's, uh, no, one has, no one has ever been able to go. I've seen, you know, there is God the Father completely um, in his completeness, let's put it that way. Um, yeah, John chapter 6 speaks of in verse 46 not that, again Yeshua says not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God he has seen the Father so here again um, I know we love to emphasize who Yeshua is but he taught in a general sense God our Father we cannot look upon him he is high and mighty lifted up way beyond um, Yehovah is the great I am um, this also, and Paul took this seriously when he wrote Colossians and describes, now most people go here to, for the part about Yeshua, but also let's understand how he emphasized uh, our God and seeing God specifically. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, he, Yeshua, is the image of the invisible Elohim, the invisible mighty one. This idea of we cannot look upon God. <laughs> Getting to God, we're talking about just beyond us. What we do get here, the however, this is going to become more important, is the idea of, but he can make his image known, or he can represent himself, but we cannot think of that as completely looking upon upon the great I am. Okay? The, as with Flatland, no, that which is of the higher dimension, he looks upon us. Okay? Let's get this the right way around. So that we look could ever truly look upon him. And so this is this is really interesting, uh, this idea of the invisible Elohim. And he is spirit. Okay, and so just wrapping up, Haya, the I am, the unique quality is that he is outside of his creation. Okay, and that Yehovah is our Father. And that we understand these things. And that finally, to understand his transcendency is to, we need to have a healthy understanding of we are in flatland. <clears throat> and because of that, any working definition, we're going to have to have a level of mystery. If someone's explaining the God of the Bible and there's no more mystery, um, I don't believe they're explaining the God of the Bible right. And, uh, and it's not that we cannot comprehend Him, but in our comprehension, there's always going to be an element where um, yeah, we can't fully fathom the great I Am. So anyway, I hope this teaching is, uh, yeah, it's been a good one. And uh, that may help you uh, just to understand Avinu, our Father in Heaven. And that um, this is who in Israel we typically understand of as, as God. And we can worship Him as such and love Him as such. And, uh, and He does desire, despite His transcendence, to make Himself known and we'll get into this, the idea of he can tabernacle amongst us, that he, uh, his glory was seen in Israel. Um, for the unseen God, there are interesting places where he seems to be seen. Um, and how to resolve this uh, paradox of scripture. Alright, Shalom.